Hello guys, this is Joyce from Enjoy Scrapping 2. Today I'm here with Tipla Designs LLC and we'll be playing with these Clarity brushes that I just received. I've been wanting to play with this for a while, so I'm really uh, excited to try them out. As you can see, um, the brushes are very soft and has like a tapered um, edge to it. And I haven't tried it yet. I'm going to be trying it out with you guys. This whole process took about three hours. And I did condense it down to about 20 minutes. But uh, it's a little bit of a longer video. But I think um, you'll enjoy what you see. So the brushes come in four different sizes in one pack. These brushes sell out like crazy so I just saw them on pre-order so if this is something that you want you need to grab it when they have it because it sells out like that so I bought um, I got this set of four it comes in a set of four eventually I want to um, get one for each color family so this is how it comes for different size the one that I'm, I'm working with today is the largest one here and um, you can see I have some things already pulled out that I'll be using I'll be using um, this clarity stencil that I got it's a very intricate um, birch tree design It's absolutely gorgeous but it is very intricate and um, I wanted to test out these brushes on uh, several different types of cardstocks, so you'll see me um, doing that. So what I did was I used this stick and spray, and I kind of sprayed it so that it's a little bit tacky since it is uh, very intricate. But um, I don't think I put enough. Uh, I want to kind of put a little bit more later when I want to use it. And uh, at one point in time, I used to be really uh, into making backgrounds and things like that. And so I um, love creating this scenery here. And you can tell, uh, depending on the colors you choose, you can get a variety of different looks. Um, this right here is on a glossy cardstock. Um, it's really beautiful. I at one point was really into this but clarity stamps as well as Lavinia stamps which have a lot of um, those silhouette types of uh, images are absolutely perfect for sceneries like this so today I might be using that um, Technique Tuesday stamp as well and I wanted to go ahead and use this W plus 9 so you can see I have several different card stocks here and um, a lot of different inks. So I'll be using the Distress inks today and all the colors that I used will be in the uh, description below uh, where I list all my supplies. So I have a Nina 100 pound. I also have a Nina Solar White 80 pound and I also have a Glossy card stock watercolor cardstock and a mixed media cardstock. Um, I didn't do it on all of it, but I'm going to show you a uh, different um, variety and how it looks on a specific cardstock and uh, different colors as well. So here I'm kind of just getting started. Um, as you know, Tupelo Designs LLC will be giving away the um, uh, what is that? The blending tool that Mike makes for each order placed in the month of January. So I have two, and now I have four. I plan to collect uh, one for each color family as well. So here I'm kind of testing it out, and uh, because the brush is still new. Um, in the beginning, you don't really get that much color. That's because uh, the brush doesn't, isn't really loaded up with the color. Here, I'm just going back and forth motion here. And I'm using tumble glass. I wanted to start it. Um, actually, that's peacock feathers. Peacock feathers. And this right here is Mermaid Lagoon. 
and as you can see I'm just kind of swiping it from the outer edges to in and then also doing that um, from the left edge to the center but I, I'm um, also kind of going in between the tree branches as well because it has a lot of these delicate branches uh, some of them you can't really get in between those so that's why you see me sometimes going in between the little branches but it's a perfectly tapered this brush so it makes it very easy to blend you can definitely do this uh, using um, the distress uh, blending tool you just won't uh, get this really soft effect and I think that is what's great about these brushes. You, you'll be able to see it once I um, take out the paper. So this initial uh, one I'm using here, this is Nina Solar White 80 pound and um, I'm making it uh, from light to dark at the top and I'm going back and forth from each color and you want to overlap uh, the colors so that it has a seamless blend but it really gives this really soft blend and you can see that and I really love it I just had a blast um, just brushing and that's all I'm doing is brushing from uh, the outer edges to the center and you can see some of the uh, center branches that are really um, intricate uh, you'll see some white marks and that's because I'm putting uh, I'm not putting too much pressure at this point and I'm just uh, swiping it like you would um, when you use blush when you're putting on makeup you know very lightly and um, that's how I'm doing it so here you can see look how gorgeous that is really soft beautiful colors so this was uh, Nina solar white and now I want to try the watercolor cardstock. This is a Strathmore watercolor cardstock. And you can see now that the brush is a little bit, has uh, more colors loaded. And now I'm working with uh, Mermaid Lagoon. It could be Peacock Feathers. Uh, and then okay mermaid lagoon blue blue print sketch and then I'll um, add chip sapphire to the top so again I'm doing the same thing as um, I did uh, but you can always clean off the brush with like a paper towel and um, it looks like there's like a whole lot of ink on the brushes but there actually isn't so when you're wiping it on a piece of paper towel to take the color off the color will come off so you don't like need million brushes but I mean it would be good to have um, one for each color family so as you, as you can see here uh, for this I chose to put the wilted violet at the top and it, that's so pretty and because this is a watercolor cardstock you can see that texture through the um, brushes the brushed background you'll be able to see uh, the texture I really like it and because it's a watercolor um, cardstock I notice it um, blends better and because it has tooth I think it's grabbing the colors a little better so I really like this one as well. So you can uh, do an orange red combination that'll kind of give you like uh, sun sunrise sunset. You can create all different type of looks. So you can see here, it's like a seamless blend. Um, you can definitely get this effect with blending tools as well, but it's just I don't think you're going to be able to get that real soft look so this right here is glossy cardstock um, like the samples that I've showed uh, in the beginning those are all most of them are made with glossy cardstocks so um, I used to love creating sceneries with glossy cardstock so this is um, the Rangers glossy cardstock and again I'm starting out with peacock feathers and the Mermaid Lagoon 
And because this uh, specific cardstock is glossy, they tends to dry faster. So um, I wasn't getting like a really even blend as far as the blending, but it's still a very soft blend. So each cardstock gave like a different type of a look. So as you can see at the top, there's some areas that I put um, heavier ink. And it looks like um, it was kind of catching on the branches. And I think that's because I didn't um, spray enough of the sticky um, spray. But you can um, go up and down. You can go uh, side to the center. So here I'm just trying different ways to, um, so each cardstock uh, has kind of a different look. So depending on the look that you want, you can choose your cardstocks. So as you can see, I want that top corners to be a little bit on the darker side. So I'm tapping. And so now that's done, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. So this is a glossy cardstock. It looks, it looks really cool. It has a shine, and you can still see that very soft blend. So here is the Nina Solar White, the glossy cardstock, watercolor cardstock. I believe I have another one that I used... Um, Okay, so now I'm going to be using uh, another cardstock, which I'll show you. So these are the three that we did. You could tell um, each paper has like a different look. I noticed a watercolor cardstock takes the best color. And now I have all these ink on my uh, stencil. So what I'm going to do is this right here is a mixed media paper. And I'm going to use a baby white and I'm cleaning it on top of this cardstock. So what this is going to do is take the color off of the stencil, but it's going to spread it out. So you're not going to get like a perfect uh, even blend, but I think this is another cool way to get another different look. So the baby wipe is uh, kind of uh, damp, not too wet, just slightly damp. And as I'm cleaning off the stencil, you can see that the ink is being transferred onto this mixed media cardstock. And that is the look. So that's pretty cool. And now I'm going to go ahead and um, take the stencil off and clean my hands. So I go off camera after I do this. And what I did with this specific one is I traced over the lines right there, as you can see, using the Prima watercolor um, pencils. And so you'll see later on the color that I use. I'm using a set from the Julie Nettings Skin and Hair, I believe Hair and Skin Tone Collection. That's what it's called. And what I did was I just placed it and um, I traced the um, little the lines of the tree. Here I'm using a VersaFine Onyx Black ink and I went ahead and stamped it uh, matching up the stencil so that the deer looks like it's behind the tree. And I'm going to do another one here. This is the watercolor cardstock. And you want to make sure you press it down and then pull it back up straight because it gets a little slippery, I notice, on the stencil. I use the VersaFine Onyx Black Ink because this is a very dark ink and it's a pigment ink. So I'm going over the um, parts that didn't stamp. Uh, with my favorite Castell Pit Artist Pen. And here you can see that I'm going to start coloring in 
some of the branches of the um, birch trees. So I'm using just one color of the Prima color here. Here I tried to use the um, Peerless watercolors, but the colors were too intense for me. I didn't want it to be too dark. I wanted it to be pretty light because I still wanted some of the white areas to show. So some of them I'm just lining it. I'm sorry if the video is kind of off. Uh, that's because, uh, I don't know, something happened with my camera and I almost lost all of this footage. So um, you can see it's... Sorry about that. Uh, you can kind of uh, fast forward it if this is kind of annoying. Um, but it seems like it's going in real slow motion for some reason. And um, so I do apologize. But um, I did want to show a little bit. I'm only putting a little bit of the line with the Prima watercolor uh, pencils. And then I'm kind of blending it out, but not really. I'm using a really short, flat brush so it doesn't hold a lot of water. So I'm not really blending it out, but I'm just liquefying the lines, if that makes sense. So... I'll do this off camera because um, this is kind of weird. So here you go. So now I want to stamp this uh, stamp onto this glossy cardstock. And I'm using Stays On. And um, for some reason, Stays On, I keep re-inking it, but it seems to always dry on me. And I think that has to do with um, the... Uh, humidity over here in Hawaii um, because I noticed my Copic markers um, uh, dry out super fast too. So here I use the blueprint sketch and I just kind of went over it not too much because otherwise it's going to blur the um, image because that's glossy cardstock. So here um, I'm just gonna go ahead and attach it straight onto my Nina 110 pound cardstock. I'll be able to uh, show you uh, better um, really soon. And the video is going to go back to its normal settings. So here I have three cards that I made. The one on the right, this right here, is the glossy cardstock, which uh, we stamped the little grass at the bottom and I stamped a couple birds and the sentiment I'm using is from all to new label love and I just put happy birthday this is a fantastic masculine card I have a, a hard time making masculine card so this would be perfect here is the one that we just put the a baby wipe to clean the stencil and I just went over the tree with the watercolor pencils. The one on the far left is the watercolor cardstock. Then that right there is the Nina 80 pound. So you can see you can get several different looks uh, using different uh, color combinations as well as different cardstocks. I'll definitely be doing more tutorials with these brushes. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this video and I apologize once again uh, about the footage that was kind of weird. So you can see a close up right here. This is the watercolor cardstock. This is a mixed media cardstock and this right here is a glossy cardstock. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks so much. Bye.